Octavia. We are live. We are live on LinkedIn yes. on another Meet the Authors of the Potent Power of Menopause. And today I'm joined by a very special co author. And this is Maggie. And she has to say her own surname. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard for me. But Maggie is right. from India. And welcome to having this conversation with me. Thank you so much, Clarissa. Yeah, my my Indian real name is Maragata Valli. That itself is long. I just go by Maggie to spare people the <laughs> difficulty of trying to say that. I know. Yeah, lovely we, to be here. It's lovely you. to have you here, Maggie. I mean, I think you are the youngest co-author in the book, which is you know amazing and bringing a very different perspective into the book because not only a perspective from a very different culture than many of us talk about in in menopause most of it's very driven by western and to be honest british cultures and also of course your own passions which i'm sure we're going to talk about in a minute but you know maggie why did you come into this book i mean for you what was the reason for stepping in um, yeah, I've been, it's really the uh, passion and uh, my research into menstrual health that led me to this. Um, and the menopause might look like uh, a grand end to the big cycles that we've been going through uh, most of our adult lives for women. Uh, but how someone perceives menopause and how one goes through it has a lot to do with how one cares for their menstrual health throughout their uh, 30s and 40s. And I have been researching a lot on it and it opened up a whole world of wisdom for me which I felt many women do not know. Um, a lot of us, I've been part of this um, attitude too where we regard this as just another nuisance in life. I know of many of my girlfriends who have asked their doctors, just get my uterus off, I cannot take this anymore. Um, and uh, and that really bothered me, and I felt this was a great opportunity to work with all of you and get some of the some of these ideas and thoughts out. Saying it's not all bad, and there's so much to be learned, experienced, and derived from what our own bodies have to tell us. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And I mean that for people who maybe don't know you that well really is linked to your own personal philosophies. I mean, talk a little bit more about your sort of background of yoga and Ayurveda as being central to the way that you live your life, not just manage your menopause. Uh, absolutely. So, I've been introduced to yoga at a very young age, but it became a very central part of my life in my mid-30s. Until then, it was just a physical exercise. Um, a lot of it initially was just driven with being fit and, and not putting on weight, being thin. It's just the very popular notions a lot of us women are driven by. But as I went into yoga and I discovered that our bodies hold so much wisdom. They tell us, if we listen, they tell us when to eat, what to eat to start with. And as long as we just go by it, we don't even need these fat diets that come along. And uh, and they tell us how my body is feeling that day, uh, how much should I move, how much should I stretch. So it just became a lifelong exploration for me with breath and yoga. And the more I went into it, things automatically fell off, you know. Uh, chocolate suddenly stopped becoming this emotional thing I would go to, uh, just stuff like that, which I had to really work hard through diets. With these, it became possible. And... Uh, and it opened up the world for me in a very, very uh, new way. Connecting with your body is also connecting with the earth. And then it just leads to a whole array of things from uh, being environment friendly um, to going naturally moving towards natural and organic material, uh, simplifying the life. It just started echoing in many, many parts of my life. So when you say personal philosophy, that's what come to me. It was not a very conscious movement towards a simple minimalistic life. It, kind of automatically came on as I, uh, you know, discovered this part. Yeah, yeah. And I think in the book, what I know from you is that you bring a lot of the your yogic philosophy into your own chapter, which makes 
that's so amazingly different from from maybe some of us who've written it from more a Western perspective. I mean, what is it in yoga that can help women in perimenopause from your perspective? Right. And this was a very recent discovery, honestly. I do know that, uh, I did know that yoga and practicing through many poses helps women to have, um, helps women to eliminate cramps. They can have a much more simpler and easier menstrual cycle to go ahead with. But in the last three, four years, I also discovered uh, the other limb of yoga, if you may, the Ayurveda, which talks about how a person's body is constituted. It talks about the three uh, doshas, the vata, pitta, and kapha, which everyone's body is made of. And there's a lot of literature that's not available popularly, which talks about how this can impact women's health. So Ayurveda looks at um, menstruation as a way to get in touch with health on a monthly basis. So just by looking at the disturbances of how your periods is, you can understand where what has gone excess or what what, do you, what does your body need, what is what your emotional, what do you, you know, what does your emotional body need, what does your mental body need? Because there is also this concept of physical body, the Anamaya Kosha made of food and the cross body. Then there is an the emotional body which all of us can relate to. You know, emotions seem to be hitting us and we have absolutely have no control over them. Yeah. Then there is the intellectual, the mental body where which makes all of us gravitate towards science and the logic and understanding things. That is another part. And of course, yoga talks about two more sheets, which are at a much more subtle level. But these three are what we deal with on our day to day life. But being in touch with all of this on a very practical basis through the 30s and 40s helps a woman to have um, a, a better health and also easier menstrual cycles. Yes. But what it also ultimately leads to is a more balanced journey towards menopause. Uh, again, the answers I was seeking for, I was able to find them in Ayurveda, where it divi- defines menopause as the phase where a woman moves from a, a pitta constituency to a vata constituency. Pitta is all about ambition. Yes. And in our 30s and 40s, we are building our careers, we are having children, we are bringing them up. Um, and our ambitions lie in both. We want to have the perfect house, we want to have the perfect family, we want to have the perfect kids. So there is ambition in that. And if you're career women, we are ambitious about a career as well. When we say Vata phase, which occurs in the 50s, the, typically kids are grown up, they're probably at a stage where they are about to go to college, university, and there is some space for us to realize who we are, not as mothers and caregivers and career women, but who am I? That question comes. So Vata is about, Vata is air. It's, 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 it's something that spreads. So yeah. from being this focused, concentrated, driven women, we move into women who are ready to uh, share our wisdom with the world. So that yeah. is really the transition as per yoga and Ayurveda. So how does a woman prepare it? So this has a lot of clues as to how to design your life throughout this two decades and move into menopause in a very gracious way, which I found very interesting the modern world I explored. Yeah, and and very, very different to sort of arriving in this place in the world and sort of going, you know, now I need to fix it. And this sort of transition of of arriving in menopause um, really more prepared and, and I listened to Dr. Claudia Walsh when she gave a, a talk alongside me recently, and she's a, a big American-based Ayurvedic practitioner, and she talked about rest. You know, you need to rest. And she said, I wish women yes. in the West would rest more at this time of life because it will help their transition tremendously. And instead, they're, like you said, in this meta mode, going, 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 and, it, and it's almost contrary to, to what we need. Absolutely. In fact, um, she is very right. Ayurveda talks about taking care of yourself like a baby at that point in time. Um, if you if you go to a practitioner for any of the uh, extreme effects of menopause, the kind of medicines they give you is, is really that. And then they, the lifestyle changes they tell you is to really take time off and really look at yourself because you're emerging new so yes you are in a sense 
a new baby giving birth to yourself. Uh, and, and I think we go from, and it's, it's metaphorical also, right? So we have this entire cycle of the possibility of giving birth to another human baby, which stays with us for a couple of decades. And now we are giving birth to ourselves. That is what menopause really is. Yeah. So the rest is as much as the rest someone needs during pregnancy and as a new mother, very much like that. I love that. I love that, Maggie. We're giving birth to a new us. I mean, what a message right. to take out of menopause. And I mean, birth is hard. Yeah, it can yes. be challenging. Then maybe that helps us to understand that we're birthing a new self, even though it takes a long time sometimes. It, it is a really beautiful way to look at, at menopause and, and very, very different to a more logically driven mindset yes um, and i also spoke to a lot of women around here and uh, many of them said that their creativity just got a new lease of life after menopause yeah indeed and i've just seen a post from a woman on on a swedish facebook group and she wrote all the positives and she said, I just wanted to share. And top of the list was creativity. She said, now I've been through this. This is what I've gained. And then a whole list of other things around energy and joy and focus. But a fantastic kind of synergy there if we allow it. Maggie, in writing this book, you went through a personal journey. But what do you think was the biggest insight that you gained from being uh, an author in the potent power of menopause? Um, <laughs> that was quite a bit of a journey, Clarissa. <laughs> um, <laughs> first of all, just coming into this and uh, meeting all of you and going through this journey, it was very empowering for me. And I realized how less is being shared and talked about in the world on this topic and how much fear and inhibition is there. I got in touch with my own fear and inhibition and you won't believe it. As late as last week, someone reached out to me and said, I saw your post on menopause, but I did not want to react to it on LinkedIn because I was afraid of what people would think of me. So there is still so much inhibition and I have to admit that I got in touch with my own inhibition. I was like, okay, I'm writing this chapter in this book what are people going to think of me that was a question i dealt with and, and that is something i had to deal with and go through that and get in touch with my own fears and as i went through it my personal health took an interesting turn um, i was dealing with a, a condition in my uterus and that had to be medically dealt with and as a person who believes so much in yoga and ayurveda i was just conditioned to not seek the solutions western medicine gives so i did not want to have a surgical solution i didn't want to work with the gynecologist uh but my personal journey really was to really look at my body and my health as uh, something that is going to support me on the journey towards wisdom and towards a more gracious life and accept all the solutions that are coming my way all the support that's coming my way yeah um and I did open up myself to a medical procedure that helped me get through what I was going through. I don't want to go into those details. Uh, but it was a huge transformation for me to let go of some of the ideas I had about how this phase needs to be handled and how I have to emerge strong in every single challenge. You know, there is this constant expectation to stay strong in spite of whatever is thrown at you and not seek the easier way out <laughs> but for me really the lesson was that is sometimes it is okay to take the easier way out if i don't have to fight my way through every single challenge that comes my way <laughs> no that's very true and i think listening to that as well i think that echoed the conversation that i had with dawn bates who for those of you tuning in is our editor and another author in this book that ultimately 
it's really about choice and the choices we need to make and being pro-choice rather than being yes. I'm in this lane or that lane around menopause, but that we're actually open to what we need and listening to what we need and taking that on board and acting accordingly. Uh, I love the way you put it. It's, it's not being this lane or that lane, but being really open to all choices. And that's a very refreshing way to look at the word pro-choice. Pro-choice really means being open to all choices. It's, it, you know, um, that, that's a very beautiful way to put it, Larissa. I think so. And I think that for me, that makes it so much easier to, um, to then be able to to talk about this time of life without somebody shaming you or putting you in a in one box um one box really and saying you're here or you're not here then then yes. yeah that, that's, that's it yeah um you know then i think about your biggest insight was was obviously this this whole journey and that if you had a message that you wanted to give people who might be considering reading this book, coming into this book, what's your best tip or message you would have for them? My, I want people to be, become curious. I would say, look at this book with curiosity, right? Um, there is so much celebration around you. Definitely so. Youth is beautiful and youth is when you have the energy and the attitude that we can do anything we want in the world. As we age, that does not mean it's an end of things. It is a transformation and a transition into something that is that's a lot more calmer. And uh, instead of just being restricted and scared, you know, looking at it with fear, which I see happening around a lot of women my age, which I'm also seeing happening with a lot of older people who think they're done with life and they don't have anything to look forward to. Mm -hmm. My message would be to be curious. Um, and I think all of us bring a different element. We even have Nick bringing in a man's view of how this face is, <laughs> right? So just by listening to stories, uh, it opens up someone's view of what this can be like. I think everyone who's uh, written a chapter here is giving a glimpse of the possibilities of this journey. So I would really say, just be curious, be curious about what others have done, be open to speaking to it, and be curious about what is happening with yourself also. Uh, yeah. For me, curiosity is a solution for a lot of the uh, inhibitions we uh, face. Instead of being looking at it with um, fear, if we can look at it with curiosity to understand what it is, it just opens up a lot more possibilities. Indeed. Maggie, thank you for sharing an, an, a glimpse of your wonderful chapter. And, and we are so grateful that you are here as one of our co-authors. And thank you for making the time. It's later in the day for you in India, but your contribution has been invaluable. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Clarissa. It's been, it's been awful. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's been a really <laughs> great opportunity to work with all of you. This is what happens when I'm translating in my head. In I know, English. I know. <laughs> I know that one too. <laughs> But for those of you who've been watching this video, we just want to say that we're doing this Meet the Authors. The Potent Power of Menopause releases on May the 11th. So we're on countdown mode. Uh, join us later today for some more Meet the Authors and through next week and the week after so that you can hear not just that it is a book, but really why this book and some of the insights that you as well, if you choose to buy it, might get. And if you're interested in becoming one of our reviewers, then drop me a comment and let me know and I will send you a PDF copy. In return, we want your review and you get to come to our launch party and get a signed copy of the book from either me or Dawn. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Maggie. And until later, when we meet the authors yeah. soon again, have a great day. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye.